Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick look at something I've designed on Thingiverse. Now I have lots of designs on Thingiverse. 3D printing is a fantastic addition to the hobby and is a great way to make parts. Before I got into 3D printing I would spend hours whittling away with a piece of balsa wood to make a specific piece to maybe hold a servo in a particular place or to fix a part that had already broken. Uh, the great thing with 3D printing is that it is not only allows you to download things from Thingiverse and print them, but to design them yourself. Now this is my latest design. This is a pan and tilt setup. Now I've done quite a few videos on how pan and tilt works, how you set it up in things like OpenTX, how you set it up with Trinity head trackers. We've even made a DIY version out of a little Arduino board that's very cheap and inexpensive. I'll put links down below to all of those videos. And recently, one of my friends has been playing with the cub that I did a review of a while ago. That was the Hobby King cub. And we finally managed to get it flying and have a little bit of a play with a pan and tilt gimbal inside. Now, the issue that I've got with pan and tilt tilt gimbals uh, like the one on the front of my Bixler here is that they are incredibly tall and that means that they're not particularly aerodynamic and for putting them in places where you want to play with pan and tilt stuff they're not ideal because also they're not particularly robust they're going to get damaged quite easily so I thought you know what I'm actually going to design this this is not the first version this is a million miles away from the first version uh, this is actually the first version. Originally, the servo sat in here, the other servo goes into here, is held in place, and then as this servo rotated, whoop, uh, hopefully you kind of get the idea, it kind of gave it a pan and tilt. However, that did require you making a hinge out of a cl paper clip and kind of bending the rest of the hinge into this thing. And I need to say a massive thank you because this has been a collaboration with my Patreon. So I need to say a big shout out to Les, Oliver, Chris and Orvo who actually gave some fantastic feedback on the initial design. And we've been through lots of iterations. And finally, this is the final version. So the idea is, is that this will sit in your model so it can fit pretty flat so there's not an awful lot outside it does mean that for this low profile version the look down is limited but you can look up and then obviously you can look side to side now this you don't need anything in particular you just need two standard nine gram servos uh, i've got all the servos that i've built i've actually made two of these because i'm doing a little project um, so I've, I've kind of made two 19 millimeter camera mounts at the moment but if you go into Thingiverse and you want me to design or change the width of this for the particular camera that you have quite happy to do that the other thing that I realized was that when I was designing this when I was playing with it I realized that actually oh hang on a minute you could actually have it this way round and have the uh, pan servo here at the bottom and then have this as the tilt bit and that would give you much much more up and down movement as well as round and round and that is actually what this other version is here this version is also available on Thingiverse link below so it's the same kind of um, cage as this one here with the difference being that uh, this bottom bit means that it's actually mounted vertically this is the shorter stubbier camera mount that kind of goes over here. So the idea would be that the servo goes in there, which gives you that movement and it rotates around this bottom part here. Now, in terms of actually putting them together, they're pretty easy and straightforward. There's not a lot of drama at all. All you need to do is to just make sure that all the parts are clean. Uh, the biggest part thing you have to do is kind of put these two parts together and just rub them uh, so that they kind of get all the edges off and it's a smooth movement but you don't have too much play and then put the pan servo in first would be my recommendation make sure there is uh, easily enough room to put in the tilt servo uh, that might mean just filing off a little bit of plastic behind stick it in secure it with a couple of screws that come with the servo kit and away you go 
again links to download this now i do need to talk a little bit about the plastic that you print this with uh, i get a lot of questions around what plastic should i use for 3d printing there's three types really that i uh, come across and this is all printed in something called petg and i'll talk about that in a minute i get all of my stuff here from filamentive they're based here in the uk based in Leeds, I think they are, uh, it's recycled plastic. And in my experience, the, the dimension of it and the quality of it is far better than some of the awful stuff that I've bought from eBay in the past. Now, there is one plastic that most of uh, the 3D world gets to play with first, and that is something called PLA. Uh, PLA is very, very easy to print, doesn't need a heated bed, but it's very shiny and very brittle. And the issue with that is because it is so brittle, in a crash, things snap. The other end of the spectrum for printing in the hobby is something called ABS. Now, ABS is incredibly tough. It's what our props are made out of a lot of the time and ABS needs things like a heated bed it isn't dimensionally stable if you don't keep the bed heated properly it kind of peels up at the edges it's a pig to print but when you've made the print it is pretty bulletproof I've tried to get along with ABS but to be honest it's just a pain in the butt however PETG is the great middle ground it is easy to print you don't need a heated bed really. I would recommend having one though. Having the heated bed on, even on a low value, just helps it stick. I use a uh, good old hairspray to tack it down onto the print bed, but it's also incredibly tough. So rather than breaking, it flexes like ABS, but it's super easy to print like PLA. So if you are interested in printing something like this, my advice would go for PETG. The only other option at the moment is something that's pretty new. Filamentu have just released this stuff. This is PLA Tough, which is a toughened version of PLA, which is less brittle. So if you have a cheap and cheerful printer that struggles to print ABS and you want to get something and maybe you don't have a printed bed that would make PETG easier to print either, uh, if you can only do PLA, this PLA Strong is absolutely an option. I've got red here for those instances where I want to print something because actually although printing stuff like this in black kind of you know make, means it's going to blend in it isn't going to stand out particularly with whatever it is I'm going to put this on a model. Sometimes you want a bright color like orange or red particularly if you're making things like supports or mounts for action cameras and then if it breaks off and flings into the grass then you can actually see it. So um, although, you know, I print an awful lot black in here, you know, uh, black never goes out of style, I would potentially recommend getting yourself, uh, or think about maybe getting yourself a nice bright color. And again, filamentive do a full range of those. So there we are, I just thought I'd show you this thing. Again, this is kind of my low profile uh, pan and tilt setup. I've uh, perfected it in time, potentially to have a go with it on the back of something like the new ZOHD Delta Strike, but also I've got quite a few little projects planned, uh, playing with things like FPV combat and stuff over the winter. And this means that now I have a cheap and cheerful way to put a pan and tilt setup on the model. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.